Hello and welcome to the Eye on the U podcast, the Miami Herald's Miami Hurricanes podcast. I'm David Wilson. I'm joined, as always, on the other line by Susan Miller Degnan, our Hurricanes beat writer here at the Herald. Susan, what's going on? Ah, uh, I don't know. Quiet, a little quiet. Right? I mean, that's the holidays <laughs> over. Obviously, transfer stuff will ramp up again, but uh, it's been a quiet couple of weeks on the. It's, on, it's in been Miami quiet. World. There's, it, it has been. It's been nice and quiet, yeah, and it will start ramping up. Uh, we have we have a few things to talk about today, though. Yeah, really fun college football uh, weekend, like one of the most fun oh, college yeah. football weekends I ever remember. Um, obviously, great was, well, maybe, yeah. we'll, we'll, maybe we'll talk a little playoff championship preview at the end, but um, I mean, the Michigan TCU game is, was ridiculous. Obviously, Ohio State, the, the fact that that kick went up like as, right at midnight in the Ohio State game. Oh, I know. Was incredible. Amazing. And then um, got got to shout out the Tulane Green Wave. My cousin went to Tulane. I was he was at the game, uh, so I was rooting hard for them against USC. Oh, how and, cool! And they had, I mean, that's one of the most improbable. You know, that's up there with the Boise game, right? The hook and ladder, uh, their Fiesta Bowl upset. Um, that ending of yeah. that one was was insane. Also, yeah, there's um, some really good games, man. Yeah, really good. Um, unfortunately, Miami is not playing in any bowl games. Uh, the big story for them is how they're going to try to get back there, and it's been all recruiting. Um, mm-hmm. You know, not a ton of news in the recruiting world over the last, uh, at least not Miami related. Obviously, Under Armour game was on Tuesday. There were a couple commitments there, although nothing um, Miami related. Um, couple hurricanes played in that game though a couple future hurricanes i should say um reuben bain um and robert stafford two guys who we know are going to be future hurricanes already signed okay. reuben will be on campus um in like less than two weeks when the the early guys get in i think january 17th whatever that monday is, is that's, uh, or, I think tuesday that's sorry because monday is uh, mlk day that week so exactly. it's the 17th is the first day of classes so right. we'll have a bunch of guys getting in then uh, and then one maybe future hurricane was also in the game. Uh, that is Cormani McLean. Um, that is where we will start today. Cormani McLean, five-star cornerback, number two player in the country, regardless of position, according to 24-7's composite rankings. Um, remains committed to Miami. We've obviously talked a lot about him over the last couple of weeks. Did not sign, though, on during the three-day early signing period last month. Um Showed up at the under. I think when we talked last week, it was maybe they just had the check in day up there in Orlando. Um, mm-hmm. and Cormani showed up, dicked out in all the Miami stuff. Um, did not really so he did one formal interview, I guess, and that was the, the big piece of news coming out of, of Under Armour. He did a couple, you know, like people talked to him and you know, off kind of on background, I guess, like not quoting him, but getting you know, just the latest. Uh, but he does go no. on ESPN during the game, ESPN 2 during the game. Um, gets asked about where things are at with him. Um, he says he's planning on signing on January 15th. Um, not exactly sure. Whatever that what means. means by that. Um, yeah. We did say, you know, I, we did mention a couple of weeks ago that if he does early enroll, he doesn't really need to sign. Um, and January 15th would line up with when a lot of schools start their spring semesters, including, as we mentioned, Miami is the 17th. Um, although 24-7 reported that Cormani is no longer planning to early enroll. So who knows what he means by that? Um, They asked who's in the running. He said Miami Um, after a very long pause, said Miami. And then with a big smile, yeah, big smile, shaking his head. Um, And then asked, is that all or anyone else? And he said, yeah, that's all basically. So uh, hardly exactly what he means. Um, He, no, that's when it's a smile, right? That was that all the whole thing. He was kind of laughing through it. Um, yeah, but he... hard, hard to glean exactly what's going on there. Um, I think it's it's hard to feel like I mean Miami. The fact that he's still committed, I guess. Like, I don't know. Positive, I think it's the whole thing. I, I think, I think it's hard to feel good about Miami's show. chances to close the deal here. Given, given I, I don't think it's trended. Yeah, it seems like a big show to me. It seems yeah. like it's going to be one of those one of those. I'm just guess. I'm. I mean, I have no idea, but I definitely could see Deion Sanders. I, 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 I don't know anything, but I mean, I could see it being a big ha-ha plan to say, yeah, Miami, 
wink wink laughing yeah the same thing that happened with, and, and, obviously a lot of people have compared it to the travis hunter situation from last year yeah. when florida state was the loser but travis hunter night. but tra- travis hunter really surprised everybody yes that was the shot well, it was the first one right it was the first dion splash right um, but this would not this is and the other I, thing with travis I, hunter I, is actually, it was over by the first day of the early signing period he flipped on whatever december 17th or whatever it was that year right. it was over um you know, but Cormani, I, it, yeah. I have to assume Cormani is torn, right? Or, you know, if he knew it was going to be Jackson State or Alabama or something, it would have been done on December 20th. Um, or something. I don't know if he's torn or what. Or I, was I, torn. I was torn during the early early period. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think so, too. are actually at now. Yeah, I, I don't know. My gut says that he, uh, my gut says he doesn't go to Miami. But we'll see. I, I Because it's too weird. I, I unless it really is academic and for whatever reason, you know. Yeah, that's putting a I, hold up on it. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. it's it's you know Miami. Well, so two two th- two things I want to say on this. One is just Miami has not been involved in recruiting drama like this in a long time. Um, I I mean you not since I've been around have they had been in a recruitment like this, and obviously this is getting up there with like some of the strangest ones. Ever. I've seen some good but, ones with yeah. Others. There have been some weird ones, uh, obviously, in your time. We just haven't seen this in a long time, um, right? And to go with that, my other point is, it kind of is going to go with the it's the price of business a little bit if you're in the five star game like Mario is going to be, right? Um, there's going to be there's right going to be years where you're fighting to the death to hold on to a top ten recruit um you know Especially sometimes it, sometimes it's smooth like like right there was no drama with francis no. mangoa um right. samson okan lola committed late so it was a little bit of a different situation um but you know mario's old school oregon they were in that peyton bowen deal where he flipped twice in two days during the early signing period so like it's 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 a little bit the price of business uh price of doing business when you're in literally the game literally the price of doing yeah business. i mean now, now with the nil, NIL obviously, NIL. literally yeah yeah so uh yeah agree with you it's a different world but yeah. mothers were always interesting parts of this yeah i mean there have been was it a miami who was it the were the i can't i think it was the running back and i i yeah i, I don't i don't want to get the stage. name wrong alex collins know. alex collins i think yes right? that's it he went to arkansas ran. and played for the ravens his, yeah his mother ran what did she do i think she ran onto the state i would she ran she, she wouldn't send his if I'm, i i should pull this up i don't want to slam oh, yeah she anyone. went inside she i'm, I'm the one who wrote it yeah 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 so there have been some there have been some crazy ones um but yeah uh this one is is getting Let up me there know obviously. You get it. I, I got it i got it i gotta look too uh it's, this, is, this is getting up there with some look. of the crazy ones um and it's I mean, it's especially crazy because as we talked about, like Cormani, given their needs at corner and the value of that position right now, right. Uh, it was one of the biggest additions they have coming in. It was, I mean, when he picked Miami over Florida, that alone was like a, a big deal. It shocked everyone and, you know, got Miami a, a huge statement win yeah, on the big. recruiting trail. Um, you know, I think that momentum, even if Miami doesn't sign him, probably helped, right? Like, you know, I recruit we talk about all the time that momentum in recruiting helps like oh, oh, oh. people see yeah. he commits and and it looks like Miami's doing well I think yeah it's I ultimately agree. good for Miami that that happened now um but yeah, yeah it's, it's because... definitely a crazy situation here and he's got four official visits left he can use in these next few yeah, weeks cause... um and you know Miami he already took his official visit to Miami so they're gonna have to work really hard I think to keep him from going to Jackson or uh Colorado, if the Dion stuff is true, Alabama almost certainly will be in there. We'll see if Florida gets back in. I think, you know, they were obviously the top contender uh, back when he committed. Um, but I, I think a lot of people in Florida have said they're not really in on him anymore. So it'll be really interesting. I mean, it's going to be the biggest story to follow here in the next month until signing day for Miami. Yeah. Um, everything you're saying is true. There's going to be, I don't, I don't know how many, how many um, high school kids are going to even get yeah i mean i'm looking at you know looking at the list there's you know there, yeah. there's him there's nicholas harbour is a five-star athlete from dc they, they're they trying to get who's like you know freak freak like built like a defensive end and like runs the 100 dash like an olympian um you know it's gonna be a long shot for them to get in there 
Um, I know yes. I haven't talked to him in a while, but I, I know Chamberlain Campbell, who was like a pretty interesting defensive end from from Lakewood. I talked to him uh, when they played Central Miami Central in the playoffs. Um, who you know just playing his first year of football, so he's a little, not you know I think he's unranked, but an interesting prospect who was waiting because his recruitment was kind of blowing up. So there there will be a handful, but yeah, I mean they what do they have twenty four kids, twenty five kids signed now? Um, it's not a lot of not a lot of uh, room left to add more guys, no matter what. Obviously, as we said, the count you know, you have infinite counters this year, but you're not right. you you don't want to take a thirty five player class and you still want to have somewhere in that 25 range. So yeah, there's not, there's not much more going to happen between now and signing day. I don't think. Agree. They might get some transfers. Yeah, definitely transfers. That'll be obviously the news coming the rest of the day, next, the rest of this month. And and there'll be a visit here and there and, and Cormani stuff. That'll, that'll be the, those will be the big stories as we uh, go towards signing day, which is on the first February 1st this year. Um, mentioned a couple other Miami commits were in the, um, under Armour game, I'll say I wasn't up there for practice all week. I, I came back from Dolphins, and then went up there the next day. Um, Robert Stafford, by all accounts, you know, kind of an up and not. He's still learning that position, kind of an up and down week for him. Um, cornerback who is mostly a wide receiver, uh, but Reuben Bain, kind of unsurprisingly, was I guess awesome all week and was good in the game. Batted down a pass at the line of scrimmage, um, had a couple tackles, uh, including like one stuff for no gain on a run. Um, he's, I mean, checking all, he, he obviously checked off all the boxes pretty much every step of the way. And another, another series of, of boxes he checked off here. Uh, interesting. I, he was lining up a lot as a defensive tackle, which he's always kind of been insistent that he's, no, a defensive, that's interesting. but, um, right. you know what? Miami's going to have a lot more need for defensive tackles this year. It seems like than defensive end. Oh, yeah. So, um, I wonder if he'll see that that's the way to get on the field as a freshman. Um, Cause I think he's got really, really high upside there. Yeah. I, I just want him to stay healthy. Yeah. Well, all these guys, well, he's coming <laughs> off. I mean, I, I, I wrote it in my story yeah. about him before signing day. Um, it was like kind of forgotten that he like tore some ligaments in his knee in the state championship last year. And Yikes. like, didn't miss a beat at all. Like came back and um, you know, I remember his coach, Jube Joseph was just like, he's a freak of nature like he's so obviously some injury history there but for the most you can't use the word freak anymore David. i know i, I know it's over sorry it's i just used no more but nicholas no more. harbour is a freak i will say that um yeah i'm sure a, he is a giant who can run like that like that's that's a freak that's of nature cool. yeah okay other piece of news for miami this week um a new practice facility or a new football facility. Um, right. Obviously the IPF is only a couple of years old, but we knew when that Mario Cristobal was coming and Dan Radakovich was hired, that there was more coming. Um, they promised that pretty early on Mario. I mean, has pretty much said he wouldn't be coming to Miami if there was not that kind of commitment to um, bigger, better facilities. Um, right. Susan, you wrote the story um, and uh, yeah, you know, listen to Dan Radakovich on on the radio the other day too, talking about uh, a whole litany of different topics. Um, what what stands out most to you about this facility? Well, it's it's pretty cool because it's seven stories, and you know they don't they don't have a lot of room. That's always been the right. Problem. That's always been the problem. On campus, yeah, there's just no room. And uh, what was cool about this is that they they built they built it up. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, and even Dan was saying that um, it, it's, it's kind of neat because that they can like on the seventh floor, you can apparently you go up and you can see the whole, all, you know, the skyline of Miami, you see the whole campus mm -hmm. and uh, uh, it's, it's just all in one. Everything's in there. It's attached. It's cool that it's attached to the, uh, the indoor practice facility. Yep going to kind of i think it's going to spit it's going to be like a bridge it's going to br go over water or something it's um everything's in it david from uh, yeah. I, I i'm looking i like the the highlights well it, the, the seventh floor is the thing i was just telling you about look i'm reading my story here um uh let's see here whoops i gotta get to the jump sorry guys um 17 17 uh-oh. 
<laughs> Wait a second. Yeah, that's right. 7,500 square okay. foot rooftop yeah. terrace. Yeah, with the views of the campus. I think that's neat. With well, the, yeah, they, they always like to do like their recruiting barbecue. I don't know. I can't remember exactly oh, where they do them. But remember, they always do them on like a rooftop balcony. Or oh, oh, balcony oh, all right, right. Yeah, that's going to be cool. Digital Media Lab, name, image, and likeness suite and multi-purpose gym on the top floor, right? Uh -huh. And then they're going to have all their their uh, tr uh, athletic training and medical, like sports medicine stuff. Um hydrotherapy recovery spas saltwater float tanks all that stuff red yeah. light therapy whatever that is meditation room we could use that after our you know yeah seriously and uh a relaxation lounge and then they're going to have a team meeting rooms up there but it's and then fourth floor says a primary recruiting lounge and recruiting reception area and i think they're going to have um like some area that it shows, oh, here, 360 degree digital experience experience showing the past and present of Hurricanes football. I think they'll, you know, it's, it's kind of neat. They'll show that to all the recruits. Um, and, you know, nutrition, they're going to have their whole nutritional center there. Mm -hmm. And it'll be nice. I think it'll be really nice. Um, it's got to be more than 100 million. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not an economist. Yeah, I'm, I'm really bad with money. Well, it's going to be more than a hundred million. Yeah, it's going to be. It'll well, first of all, prices it always be, ends up being more expensive than you think. It always goes Florida, up, especially it ends up being more than you think and longer than and, you think. And they haven't started the campaign to 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 raise the money. Yeah, so, so we're we're pretty far away, long way away from this. But there, yeah, I mean, yeah. It, so it's it's yeah. interesting because one, you know, Mario like in the way that he's trying to instill this like old school attitude at the program. He like he has to think like this is kind of goofy, right? Like that's just his personality. But at the same time, he knows how valuable it is in recruiting. And I remember last year when I I wrote a story oh, um, talking to a bunch of local coaches about uh, like all, local high school coaches, all of them anonymously, just like the state of recruiting with the big three in Florida, and um, with Miami, the two things that they said needed to change for Miami to recruit better. One was to win. Um, but the other one was facilities. All of them talked about just compared to um, right. Florida and even Florida State, the facilities were, you know, because it's a small, like you said, it's a small campus, it's a smaller private school. Obviously, the, you know, I don't think the football facility, the football field not being on campus is a, that big of a deal. But a lot of schools have their football facilities attached to their stadiums and it makes right. these like cool, like True. visuals and really cohesive. True thing um i think so i think it is a it's a, a big deal it you know facilities is not the most important thing in college football anymore now nil probably is in terms of like recruiting and building your program but it's still it's still a big deal um you know i don't think you need to have like the spaceship looking thing like they have at oregon or alabama or texas a&m to compete but you need to be you need to be in a position where those schools can't say Aren't those guys facility kind of crappy. Like you need to avoid the negative recruiting and that, you know, this will definitely do that. And, um, you know, we talk about the arms race of this and, you know, as soon as they get done with this, they're going to be talking about ways to upgrade it. So, uh, yeah, it's exactly. be we don't know when it, right. And we don't know when it's going to be built or whatever, but okay. It's some, it's something that's definitely, it's a big deal, you know, fruition. whenever it it's happens. Yeah. It is a it is a very big deal. Uh, yes. My one other question is there are going to be seven floors. Does that mean there's going to be a seventh floor crew? Oh, did you have people write that to you already? No, did people is say that, that to you? you? That's yeah, me. yeah, I've already had the, somebody wrote to me and said, I think we should name it seventh floor crew. The people who work on the seventh Yeah, the people who work on the seventh floor and be the seventh floor crew. I didn't write that. I only if you hear only if we play the music in the background, really like Muzak. <laughs> and that's the Muzak you hear in the background. Oh boy. Yeah. Um yeah. So and I've also had a couple of people write to me today, which I couldn't really figure out because I saying, <laughs> can you tell? I just had a woman, I just wrote back to a woman who said, My husband and I read your story and um can you tell us where the <laughs> Where the new U about the new UM Stadium football stadium, where is that going to be located? You never put the address, and I'm thinking, did I ever write anything about a stadium? No. Anyway, yeah, I sent I think, you, like, as Dan, as Dan Radikovich has said, anytime it comes up, stadium is not anywhere near the top of their list of things they're worried about right now. 
Um, no, this is, no. and I think honestly, I think this is a much bigger deal than a potential. Um, well, you know, because because an on-campus stadium is impossible, a more right. convenient. I'm putting that in giant scare quotes. It um, definitely is now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, stadium. So yeah, the the facilities are a big deal. Um, but it is a big deal. Yeah. yeah. Uh, should we wrap up really quickly? Uh, national championship. Are you excited? Yeah, yeah, I I am excited. I really you think am. TCU can, I, make it a, can make it a game. Why not? They, why it's not? kind of been their mo why, all why year. Should... Is like they're the team that's like they win in weird ways. So yeah, I mean, what? what yeah, I, I I mean, why? Why? How could somebody argue there's no way they're going to win? I I, I mean. Because George is really good, I, but I, uh, I don't know. I thought, I mean, yeah, George is really good, but uh, Michigan and Ohio State. I mean, they're good too. Yeah, I mean, I, uh, I mean, I that first that that game. You know, if you play that, well, I, I think the the criticism of TCU would be if you play that Michigan game a hundred times, they probably. That, that's not the outcome very often is a win like that where you know yeah, a couple of they, defensive touch a bunch of takeaways some defensive touchdowns um but they they go line they, stops but that's what they do they play one um, game that's that's what it is you play yeah. the game and that i don't know i it was like that game to me was amazing i never thought my yeah my, well, it was interesting I, because tcu it felt like could not like i know this is crazy to say about a team that scored 40, well, I don't remember what the final score was, 40 plus points, but it felt like they couldn't sustain drives, but they were just getting, you know, they had the long, the Quentin Johnson touchdown on that swing or drag route screen pass was uh -huh. incredible. Like they just could pull one of those out every once in a while. And obviously Max Duggan is, um, yeah, you know, that he's was not the most talented quarterback in the world. He's not going to be a first round pick or anything like that, but he's, uh, I mean, he just he just makes the plays. He's he's gritty. It's kind of the grit off with him and Stetson Bennett, right? You know, those those two guys might never start an NFL game, neither of them. But um, they were Heisman finalists because they're just like they make the play when they need it. And that Stetson Bennett was really Stetson. bad for a lot of that game on New Year's right. Eve. Um, but in the fourth quarter, he was lights out. I I did my story on Stetson Bennett last year when he was in the Orange Bowl. Yeah, and he was great. You know the the. Yeah, just, yeah, the former walk on. It's a, it's a great story, and actually, the yeah. Max Duggan story is great too. Where they at the start of the year, he wasn't even the. I think they were splitting reps at quarterback. Um, you know, he didn't win that job out of camp, and winds up being a Heisman finalist. Um, yeah, I that would, I can't I can't even imagine that the uh, championship could be half as good as as the semifinals. Yeah, right. That, I mean, that's the other thing I'm worried about. Is like, did we do we we burn our, our good games in the semifinals. Yeah, it's like the, it's like Super Bowls. You know, yeah. I, yeah. I, hey, the, the NFL games have been really good too. At yeah. Least, I, this season, Why right? You're a towards, Dolphins fan. Yeah, well, the Dolphins. As my husband, I'm not even going to say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say it about the Dolphins. It's just. Yeah, I've watched the Dolphins because I've been able to watch the Dolphins the last few weeks or right. whatever, however, you know, and um, yeah, it's like I told, I told you, I knew Tua was going to throw that whatever yeah. it was interception. I knew whatever I knew, Teddy Bridgewater or whatever was going to throw an interception. I just, I don't know, I yeah. don't know, Larry Jackson theory, <laughs> or Jennings or whatever. Um, last one you were at the Orange Bowl. We recorded that was right after we recorded last week. Um, any any big takeaways from that? We, another really weird game where Clemson got uh into like the red zone like forty times. And just oh my kicking, god! Missing field goals. Incredible. Yeah, it was incredible. I mean, I ten times they got. I know I tweeted out at some point that like eight. I think eight of their yeah. first ten drives they got inside the thirty-five yard line. Yeah, I wasn't at was, the game. I was just baffled by what was thirty-five. Happening. Yeah, I and then I think it was ten. They ten times they only scored one touchdown. I think out of ten, yeah. ten times being within the thirty or thirty-five, and um, yeah, it was just um, yeah, it was crazy actually. Yeah. Now that I think about it, um. But 
Clemson's in an interesting spot. I'll be very interested to see what they look like next year. With Cade, you know, Cade was kind of rocky in that game, but I still like him a lot. He was. He, he was a freshman. He yeah. I, I, he was a freshman, but I, I like him too. And Dabo, of course, got ticked off when somebody, of course, was perfect because somebody said, uh, you know, you're slipping. Yeah. You know, uh, are you guys slipping? Everybody says you're slipping, whatever. Uh, and he's like, well, what were they? 11 and like 11 and two, 11 and three, whatever they're re- He yeah. said, we've been, they've had great records. And uh, I don't know. Are they slipping? I don't know. It depends on Kate. I think Kate's really good. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. The, the Clemson dynasty has been a dynasty when they've had Deshaun Watson and Trevor Lawrence. And it's been, yeah. you know, lesser when it's been DJ Uyunglele or, Kelly Bryant or um you know even before the whole run started like Taj Boyd was very good but he was not Trevor Lawrence or Deshaun Watson so um right a lot of what they do depends on on Cade um so be interesting the ACC will be interesting next year that the, the as always the Atlantic seems like it's going to be more interesting well I guess there's no division anymore well, sorry no um, no yeah. that I think it's going to be really kind of cool I love that there's just one yeah uh, division that's it yep. right there's no atlantic no coastal bye-bye coastal just one and the top two teams with the top two winning percentages play each other that's so much better don't you yeah. think yep um and you know especially you know clemson's almost certainly gonna be the highest ranked team coming into the season in the acc like they always are uh but florida state is getting a lot of hype too and um they yeah really florida state bowl game and I- understandably um, by the way i yeah, think i mean they deserve it like the, the way they played this year and the way they played in their bowl game especially um i don't think miami will they're not going to get the benefit of the doubt next year no way think. they're not like, getting, they, no. like they often do but um, yeah I don't, I don't think they are next year at the start of the year um so it'll be um you know the acc is going to be interesting and uh miami's gonna it's gonna be competitive so uh, we can wrap things up there. Um, thanks as always for listening. And UNC didn't even mention UNC. Drake May is coming back. There's another another team that should be feisty because UNC always is. Um, right, anyway. right. And by the way, I I did want to mention that um, uh, Paul Damari died. Oh because, right. I don't know, uh, yeah. He, uh, he was 81, and he, he had um, uh, how do you say it? ALS. Yeah, ALS. ALS, he had Luke Eric's disease, and the poor guy he had. He, I mean, the guy was he was a stellar human being, a really, really yeah, good. Say he was a uh, trustee at Miami, trustee um, obviously, the, the father of uh, Miami Gino. baseball coach Gino Damari. Yeah, I, 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 I mean, just a very smart man, a great businessman, but a, a, a philanthropist who gave so much to the everything in this community in in miami and sports um sports i mean the guy was totally on top of it i mean he was he he gave a, he gave a lot of uh he was a major donor for a lot of good mm-hmm. things including um sports but a lot more even important things in my yeah, opinion. I, I gotta say i just typed his name into google and the first headline that comes up is tomato industry icon paul damari um, and that's a great way to be described as tomato industry icon. Uh, also in the Florida Agricultural Hall of Fame, which I wasn't even aware yeah, was a thing. Florida Ag- yeah, his company became the number one seller yeah. of fresh market tomatoes and uh, gave so known much as money. Mr. Tomato. Mr. Tomato gave, gave a lot of money to to uh, Miller School of Medicine and I mean, major yeah. Yeah, things. Then, right, not just, as you said, not just sports, they, an important person at the entire university. And everything. Yeah, everything. They, they, yeah. So, um, yeah, he's, he's, and he's, and he'll, his memory will definitely live on because he's has had all these dreams that are going to, that are going to come to fruition, I think. So mm-hmm. he's trying to get, get all these famous people together, together to try to cure incurable diseases like right. ALS and Parkinson's and stuff. So um, anyway, he was a great man. He did a lot for UM sports and, uh, and I like Gino and, um, you know, baseball's coming up. I know. I saw some <laughs> some ranking stuff, some All-American stuff. Well, we'll maybe we'll get into that next week. Um, I guess we'll probably come back 
one uh, with with another episode. Obviously, you no, know, we'll probably take some time off at some point before signing day. We just keep saying that. I know, but news <laughs> keeps happening. They'll get some transfers, so we'll we'll plan to be back next week. Um, I think that's a great note to end it on. Uh, you can follow Susan on Twitter at s miller degnan. Follow me on Twitter at db wilson too. Be sure to subscribe to the Herald Sports Podcast feed if that's not how you're listening to this right now, where we've got all of our shows. Um. And it's that time of the year when all the sports are kind of happening at once. So um, thanks again for listening. And we will talk to you guys next week.